Good day, everyone. It's a cold, bright, copper penny kind of New England day today, and uh, the tide is receding. Algernon Siegel is on his flat rock, and all is right with the world. Well, as right as the world can be currently. And I do apologize for having been over a week since I posted, but I was working on some other things, and uh, I'm not sure this month has just got away from me somehow. But let's try to get back to work. As I said, it's a chilly but sunny day, so we will possibly do our morning chores now. But first, let's just hop inside and have our last cup of morning tea. I used to drink coffee of a morning, but uh, my hubby gave up coffee, so I sort of did just because he did. So now it's tea all day for me. So I have a second cup after I do lie my morning uh, filming and then off to do my morning chores, which is basically gathering eggs and uh, mucking out the chickens and quail if they need it. So let's head off and always looking out to see. One never knows what's out there. <laughs> off to the chickens. Uh, now these three, the three muses here, my two Orpingtons and one my one leghorn, actually have my friendliest hens, which is funny because the leghorn, she's rather flighty, but she uh, has really grown to like me. I think it's the mealworms. And then gather the eggs. Today we only have three. And uh, this looks very staged, but this is truly how these, these three hens lay in this one box together like this. I have the white one is the leghorn, the pinky one is one of the Orpingtons, and then the gray is my one Arakana. And then I always give um, one of the three muses, whomever comes up to me, some more mealworms. Now over to the quail. I want to show this. This is Una's mother, uh, as yet unnamed because she's just one of many of my flock of quail. But I loved her color, and I was happy to see that. And she's the only one in this color except for the white male. So I know the one egg that hatched uh, out of all the eggs that became Una was definitely from she. So we've got our morning haul, our quail's eggs and our chicken's eggs. Another look, you never know. I can still see some of my treasures down there. And uh, here, you can see how um, how the quail's eggs compare in size of the chicken's egg. When I'm baking or cooking, I usually consider four quail's eggs equal to one chicken egg. And that's the pretty pastel green egg of the Arcana. Let's head back inside. Now, after I do my morning uh, chicken and quail, I usually go down for a little beach comb. I didn't find anything that exciting today. And, uh, oh, I noticed I forgot to turn my chair. And then I go back in for my second C's cup of tea. And we can come out here and have a little sit down on the tree we cut down this season. And uh, watch the sea and the birds. And I can tell you what I've done with the latest painting, The Lady and the Peacock. Hopefully you'll recall my painting, which was influenced by Lalande, The Lady and the Peacock. And this here is the version that there will only be one copy of, and this will be sent off to Lalande itself. But I want to change the colors, which I've done here, so that I could offer it to um, any of you and other people who enjoy my art. So I got out the old uh, tools of creating graphic design, which I love to do, and I put it on all the various products that I am able to sell through uh, my website from acrylic trays to rugs to wall murals. I really have fun with um, the graphic design once I finish a piece. And by changing the colors this way, I feel better that it's, this is what I will offer for prints and items such as t-shirts and all over printed shirts, things like that. Whilst the original painting will be special, a one-off and will live happily at Lalande. So yes, I just wanted to share that. So. The snow began, so I hopped back inside, had another cup of tea, it was a very tea-filled morning to watch the snow, but I heard that the heat was going to arrive later, well, New England winter heat. It would be just above freezing by late afternoon, so I thought I'd take a quick moment to just look at the sea and then take us out into the snow before it melts later in the afternoon. Now another thing I want to talk about on this vlog is many of uh, my uh, followers have mentioned that I should get on Patreon and uh, the patrons on Patreon. I'm also a patron of a, quite a few places and I like the platform. So I finally decided to go ahead and start my own Patreon page. And I've been working on that for the last few weeks, which is probably another reason why I've sort of fallen behind on videos. And I don't expect anyone to rush over there. I'm sure there are many of you who don't care about it. But for those of you who do, I just wanted to say that 
by the posting of this video, I will have a link in the description and possibly at the end of the video so that you can go to my Patreon page and become a patron. And just a little bit about what I'm going to be offering on the patron page is there's a service that I'm going to be offering, which I'm quite excited about. Hopefully it will work out for us. That will be a sort of a chat room that any of us who are patrons on my page will have access to 24 seven. And I'm calling it the virtual village because I really love how we can chat when we're on the other, on the lawns and at Michael's and things. I love being able to chat with all of you. So this way we can kind of have a little place, our little virtual village that we can just pop into whenever we want and see who else has to be on. And I think I'm going to also offer weekly I uh, have people vote to see what would be a day each week that would be fun to just meet up at the chat room. And that way it's not a video then, it's just us meeting up and having a chat about this or that. So it's like the virtual village where we're just stopping, leaning over the uh, garden gate and having a little chin wag. So, so that's my little Patreon pitch. So for any of you who are interested, the link will be in the description and you can head on over there. And I'm new to it, so there'll probably be some kinks in the beginning that I will try to iron out. but. <laughs> Let's hope for the best, and I'm excited about it, actually, just as a, a new thing to do this coming year. But now back to our walk, with the snow falling on the cedars and the pine, and still the crunch of the autumnal leaves, which break down over the winter and make a wonderful loamy soil for the uh, forest floor. But as we walk out here to one of my favorite walks, which I've shared with you many times, into the Little Harbor, seeing the snow fall in this area is always magical the sound of it hitting the, the leaves and the sound of it hitting the pine. And, and I still think the quality of the air when the snow is falling has such a more quiet, almost muffled sound. But yet there adds a clarity to the air and a bit to the light that I like. There's also a bit of that misty quality that we get when we have fog. You can see how the different uh, landscape bits of forest behind get softer in the snow as it heads out into the open harbor. So it's just a lovely day to head out. Now, I would actually love to actually have a few inches of snow, but uh, we probably will not have any snow by the end of the afternoon. So I figured we'd better capture it while we can. And the tide going out and the snow falling and the birds still singing. Isn't it pretty to see it falling in front of the pines? And just as they promised, snow in the morning, and then by afternoon, it was warmer and it all melted. So I just wanted to show, share this other little bit of uh, my walk I take daily. There's a sweet little house I walk by, um, which I've sketched many times and I really like it. It's just a sweet uh, uh, Cape Cod style house with broken, uh, or with dormers and uh, different roof lines and cute chimneys, and it has the sweetest little white picket gate set into the stone wall. But I have sketched it many times. Now where we are, we're out more into the open sea and, and a view of the bay, whilst they're set more back upon the wetlands or the marshlands which run through, so the, the direction this house is facing, they don't see the open sea, but they see the wetlands, and of course they can still see all the coastal birds hunting through here. But it's just such a pretty view. Rather, it's in, now if this were summer, this would be all a high hedgerow, which so you wouldn't see the house until just till you get to the picket of the gate set into the stone wall, and then it just reveals itself. It's just such a pretty little house, and it's often inspired me to think about what we could do to the boathouse. And uh, it's very New England with the weathered gray shingles and the white trim and the white painted chimneys. And of course, I love all the stone walls we have around here because it makes me think of lovely England and Ireland as well. But of course, it's quite New England with the stone walls. So I just wanted to share that tiny bit of my walk and uh, trying to get back into the swing of making videos again. So let's just end today's video with a view of my favorite candy floss sunset. And you can see through the, uh, I can zoom in a bit, the way the clouds are broken, the orangey sherbet color was breaking through and it really looked as if someone had just painted the sky with big broad brush strokes. So I hope uh, you've enjoyed today's video. I'm sorry it was rather short, but I just really need to get back into the swing of things. And I hope that we, uh, I hope those of you who are interested in Patreon will uh, go to my Patreon page and uh, we'll see how that chat feature works out. And for the rest of you, see you in comments and I shall see you um, on chats. And uh, remember, stay creative.